This is the female reproductive system, starting with the process of following an oocyte. Oocyte, as you imagine from the word site, is a cell. In this case, it is an egg cell. So this is the fancy word for egg cell is oocyte. And yes, we do say both O's. It's kind of a funny word. The oocytes develop each month in the ovaries. So they're coming from the ovaries. And they're in, inside the ovaries, a follicle, which is a set of cells that allows them to mature and then release. So just like the sperm mature in the epididymis, the oocytes mature in the follicles. Although in this case, the follicles are inside the ovaries and the sperm mature in the epididymis outside of the testes. The oocyte releases from the ovary in a process called ovulation. Ovulation happens, as most women are aware, on a monthly basis, approximately every 28 days, and oocyte is released and travels along. As soon as it is released, the process begins of a new one beginning to mature in the follicles. This whole process of oocyte maturation and then ovulation is called the ovarian cycle. So once an oocyte is released, then it travels out of the ovary down a tube that we used to call the fallopian tube, but we're now calling the oviduct so that it relates more strongly to the ductus deferens in men. But if you remember it as fallopian tube, don't worry, I will still call it that most of the time as well. The fallopian tube heads its way into the uterus. And don't forget there's an ovary on each side of the fallopian tube on each side of the uterus. So there are two of them and two oviducts or fallopian tubes heading into the uterus. Now this process happens every month unless a woman is currently pregnant. And we'll talk about why it doesn't in a moment. And then what happens next is dependent entirely on whether or not a sperm is present. So I'm going to start with the idea that a sperm is not present and go from there. So in a not present uterus, we have built up within the uterus a lining of blood vessels, another soft tissue that is called an endometrium. The endometrium would be the protective place for the egg to settle and grow into a new little creature. But in a case where there's no fertilization, the endometrium is actually going to leave the uterus along with the oocyte. Now the uterus itself is made out of a large amount of muscle. And so we call it the myometrium, thus all the muscle of the uterus. So the endometrium in the uterus which now contains the oocyte is going to exit the uterus in a process that we call menstruation. Just below the uterus is a small area called the cervix, which is a tightly bound muscular opening to the uterus that stays mostly closed unless somebody is giving birth or we're doing something with it. After you get through the cervix, you go through the vagina, which is the long tube that leads out from the body. As you are exiting through the vagina, you will encounter the labia minora, which are the skin fluids on the inside, and then followed by the labia majora, the usually larger skin folds on the outside, all of which uh, their goal, the labia minora and majora, is to protect the vagina from random things that shouldn't be getting in there entering instead. So that's menstruation, which when it happens on a monthly basis, and the endometrium grows, is then released through the cervix vagina and the labias, and then begins to grow again as needed. This is called the uterine cycle, which is happening at the same time but on a slightly different uh, 
set than the ovarian cycle from before. Now, this all assumed that there was no sperm to fertilize an egg. But, if we have an egg and a sperm together, now we have a whole new process, and they combine to form a zygote, which is the very, very first cell of a new human life. And the zygote will implant into the endometrium. So in this case, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays right where it is. It grows and divides through a process of mitosis, and it will become an embryo. And then as it gets older, we reclassify it as a fetus, which is a fairly um, sort of organizational concept. So after a certain number of weeks, we say it goes from an embryo to a fetus. And then eventually it will also come out through the cervix and the vagina and become a small child. Now in this case, I said that the uterine cycle and the ovarian cycle happen as long as the woman is not pregnant. Now as soon as an egg and a sperm get together and form a zygote, it sends a signal back to the ovary, which creates a corpus luteum in the ovary. The corpus luteum is the ovary's way of saying, hey, let's not produce any more eggs. It produces a large amount of progesterone, which is the hormone of pregnancy, and causes the body to no longer cycle the way that it did before, so that it will stay the same way until the nine months are up. The new organism is pushed out and then the body will go back to cycling as usual.